Hello and welcome to the next module. Now we're into module 11 and wouldn't you know it, we're doing some more hypothesis testing. Now of course it's not going to be the same as everything else. It's going to be a little bit different. If you recall in module 9 we looked at single population means and proportions. Chapter uh, module 10 we looked at two population means and proportions. Now in 11 we're going to be looking at variances as our new parameter of interest. Now we're going to bring together into this one module we're going to bring, bring together both uh, the single population scenario and within this uh, similar to the sequence of events that we've done uh, in the previous modules, we'll look at uh, hypothesis testing and interval estimates. Uh, but we'll also include in this module uh, two population tests on variances as well. Uh, we'll only look at hypothesis testing on two populations. We won't get into uh, interval estimates. So what we're going to need here uh, we can no longer use our T distributions or our Z distributions because they don't apply. They're not relevant to the distribution of sample variances. If you remember, when we were working with those distributions, we were looking at the distribution of sample means. So if I take repeated samples out of a population, the sample means that we had obtained followed a T distribution or Z distribution. Now what we're going to be looking at is the distribution of sample variances. So if I'm taking from a population, a normally distributed population, if I'm taking samples out of that population, now we're going to be looking at the distribution of those sample variances for those individual samples. So what we need to work with for single population uh, is a new distribution called the chi-squared uh, chi distribution. And the notation that we use here is the Greek letter chi-squared. A lot of my students always call this the chi-squared distribution, and it's a hopeless endeavor to try to correct them. That's fine, call it whatever you want, as long as you understand that it's actually called the chi-squared distribution. Now, the chi-squared distribution, uh, it's quite different from the t-distribution or the z-distribution. It's dependent on normal population. So it's still st stemming from a normal distribution, a normally distributed population. What the chi-squared distribution is now is the sum of squared uh, variables. So if I have, if these are all Z statistics or a standardized um, normal variable, if we add a whole bunch of these together, the sum of those squared variables will follow the chi-squared distribution. Now, what do we know? What have we already used? That is the sum of squared normal variables. Well, we know that if our population is normally distributed, then these observations, these differences, x individual observations from x bar, that's a normally distributed variable. And if we square those, and we add all of those together across i equals 1 through n, well, what does this start to look like? It should look sort of familiar here. If I were to divide this by n minus 1, well, there's our formula for our sample variance. So those sample variances, those are the sum of squared normal variables. And so the distribution of sample variances follows the chi-squared distribution. So what we're going to be working with as our test statistic, the notation we're going to be using is chi-squared. This is going to be n minus 1 times that sample variance divided by our population, or our unknown uh, popula ooh, that's population variance. Okay, so this is what we're going to be working with for all of our single population uh, tests and interval estimates will be this, um, this identity. So we'll go through a, a few different exercises with the single populations. Again, we'll have two tail tests, we'll have one tail test, upper tail test, lower tail test, and we'll look at 
different interval estimates, and of course we'll go through how to use this new distribution. It's going to be similar to the T distribution only in the sense that we have to deal with still degrees of freedom. And so when we're working with the chi-squared distribution, there's still going to be degrees of freedom uh, equal to n minus 1, always that which is equal to our estimate of the uh, population variance. And the other thing that is going to be different now with the chi-squared distribution is that as a sum of squared normals, well, we know that there's not going to be any negative values anymore. Just like when we were working with the T and Z distribution, half of it was positive, half of it was negative, and zero was in the middle of that standard normal distribution. Well, now we're not going to have any negative values because these are squared values. Similarly, being squared values, it's no longer going to be a symmetric distribution. So it's going to range from something that might look like this, if we have, uh, if degrees of freedom is equal to 2, to something that might look a little bit more like this for higher degrees of freedom. So it's going to cover a range of different sizes and shapes, really. Um, so that will affect how we calculate specifically how we calculate our interval estimates because the formulas that we used for the T and Z distribution those formulas were written as they were specifically because it was a symmetric distribution so here it'll be a little bit different because our distribution is a different shape okay moving on for our two population tests this one Again, this distribution, it's probably the most tedious distribution to work with in terms of the sample, the, the tables, the F distribution tables are just uh, awful to work with, this F distribution. Uh, but it is probably the easiest one to work with in terms of the calculations. So the F distribution, again, everything is following from a normally distributed variable. So we have the chi-square distribution, which was the sum of squared normal variables. The F distribution is simply the ratio of two chi-squared variables. So here's one chi-squared variable, and here's another chi-squared variable. The ratio of these two follows an F distribution. Now, one of the reasons, well, the main reason why the F distribution tables are the most tedious ones to work with is because with an F distribution as the ratio of two chi-squares, remember a chi-squared variable has so many degrees of freedom, and now if I'm looking at two chi-squared variables, or the ratio of two, now we have what we say, so many numerator degrees of freedom and so many denominator degrees of freedom. And this results in a wide variety of different variances, different variants of the F distribution. So again, similar to the chi-squared distribution, it's an asymmetric distribution. And it has, of course, no negative values because the two chi-squared variables, well, they don't take on negative values either. So what we're going to be using when we're performing our tests for two populations uh, two population variances will be our F statistic. It will simply be the ratio of two sample variances. And so, again, that calculation is probably the easiest test statistic that we will ever have to calculate. Now, there's one little alteration that we need to keep in mind when we're working with the F distribution. And it's entirely due to the limitations of the F distribution tables themselves because they're so huge. When we are formulating the test statistics for these, we will always formulate these with the larger numerator, uh, sorry, the larger sample variance in the numerator. And if you remember from module 10, when we were looking at two population means, the distinction between a lower tail test and an upper tail test became trivial, right? We could always formulate any test as either a lower tail or an upper tail test. Is this bigger than this or is this smaller than this? Well, that same kind of arbitrary formulation follows through 
to when we're doing two population tests on variances. We can still test is this variance larger than this one or is this one smaller than this one. So because that distinction between an upper tail test and a lower tail test becomes somewhat trivial, because the F distribution has so many variants, it will cause our F distribution tables to be very large and tedious to work with. We will always formulate the test statistic so that the larger sample variance uh, is in the numerator. Therefore, we will always be looking at upper tail tests. We'll still have two tail tests as a possibility, but when we're looking at one tail test, we'll always formulate it as an upper tail test. And when we're going through the exercises, I'll explain maybe a little bit more as to why that is and show you why it's helpful uh, to do that. So that's all I'm going to say at this point for this module. We're going to be doing more hypothesis testing. A lot of the same knowledge from module 9 is going to carry through with the formulation of the tests, with the rejection rules using p-value and critical value approaches. A lot of this stuff is going to be either identical in the case of the p-value approach or very similar in the case of the critical value approaches. So you'll see a lot of similarities. So if you've watched some of those videos, it will um, a lot of it will sound familiar to you. Okay, so that's it for um, for my introduction for this segment. Let's get into some problems.